دعوتك ربي ومن لسواك فيا رب حقق دعاء من دعاك دعوتك والقلب في فرحة يناجيك يا خالقي في علاك وأنت البصير وأنت العليم بحال ونور الحجام انطياك رأيتك ربي في كل شيء فزاد اليقين بقلب رآك ففي الزرع في الضرع في الأنس بانت بدائع صنعك بعض بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا رب العالمين اللهم ارزقنا علما نافعا يا رب العالمين يا سميع الدعاء رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقرة من لساني يفقه قولي my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. After thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending salat and salam upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we begin the halaqa of the sublime beauty of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the book of Ash-Shama'il al-Muhammadiyyah, authored by Imam Muhammad ibn Isa al-Tirmidhi rahimahullahu ta'ala, who died in year who died in year 279 after Hijra, rahimahullahu rahmatan wasi'ah. The chapter that we go, will go through today is Babu uh, Maja'a fi Sifati Muzahi Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What has been narrated concerning the jesting or Muzah, Muzah means the joking uh, of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Mahmud ibn Ghailan narrated to us saying that Abu Usama narrated to us from Sharik who narrated from Asim al Ahwal who narrated from Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu anna nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqala lah that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him ya dhal udhnayn ya dhal udhnayn meaning o the one o one with the two ears qala Mahmud qala Abu Sama yani yumazih meaning Mahmud said that Abu Sama said who was a student of Sharik or who narrated from Sharik and Sharik narrated from Asim al-Ahwal Abu Sama said that it means that he was joking with him Okay, yadhal udhunan, to state the obvious that a human being usually will have two ears. This hadith is recorded by Abu Dawud rahmatullahi alayhi and Imam al-Tirmidhi. Having said that, the, the chain is da'if here. Okay, and the next hadith is from Hannad ibn Sari, ibn Sari, who he said, he said, he said that, he, uh, rather Hannad ibn Sari narrated to us saying that, Waki'a narrated to us, who narrated from Shu'ba, Shu'ba narrated from Abu Tayyah, who narrated from Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that he said, In kan Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la yukhalithuna hatta yaqulu li akhin li saghir, ya Aba Umair ma fa'ala nughair. Okay, that uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to interact with us, that he said to my younger brother, Okay, he, uh, Anas radiallahu ta'ala and his younger brother, he said to him, Ya Aba Umair, ma fa'ala numair, uh, nughair, meaning that, O oh, Abu Umair, what happened to the little red-beaked sparrow, an nughair, an nughair is the red-beaked sparrow, okay, it's like small bird you could say. So, this hadith is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari rahmahullahu ta'ala along with his student Imam Muslim ibn Hajjar rahmatullahi alayhi and Imam al-Tirmidhi rahmatullahi alayhi in his sunan. Next hadith my brothers and sisters is from uh, Abu Isa. He said that wa fiqhu hadha al-hadith anna nabi sal uh, before before we continue next to, uh, to the next hadith Abu Isa said Abu Isa rahmahullahu ta'ala said who is uh, uh, who is the author of this book, his kunya was Abu Isa. Okay. Wafiqhu هذا الحديث Meaning, what is understood from this tradition or this hadith is that أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يمازح That Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم used to joke. وفيه أنه كان كنا غلاما صغيرا And that he nicknamed a young boy for he said to him, Abu Umair. فقال له أبو عمير وفيه أنه لا بأس يعطى الصبي الطير ليلعب به. Okay, it proves that there is no harm a young child playing with a bird. Okay, وإنما قال له النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أبو عمير ما فعل النغير. 
Since the Prophet وسلم, said to him, O Abu Umair, what happened to the little beaked sparrow? Because the boy had a little bird that he would play with. Okay, and that bird died. Okay, which made him sad. So the Prophet وسلم, joked with him. فَحَزِنَ الْغُلَامُ عَلَيْهِ فَمَا زَعَهُ النَّبِيُّ صلى الله عليه وسلم So Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم joked with him and said يَا أَبَا عُمَيْرِ مَا فَعَلَ النُّغَيْرِ In order to cheer him up, Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم made this joke to the brother, younger brother of uh, Anas bin Malik رضي الله تعالى عنه saying that O Abu Umair, what happened to the little red-beaked big, uh, red -beaked sparrow? Okay, sparrow is a little bird that had the red color and when it died, when the bird died, Abu Umayyad, the brother of younger brother of Anasud Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu was rather saddened. So, next hadith, my brothers and sisters, is Ab Abbas ibn Muhammad al-Duri narrated to us saying that Ali ibn al-Hasan ibn Shaqiq narrated to us. He said, Amba'ana Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak. Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak informed us from uh, Usama ibn Zayd, who narrated from Sa'id al-Maqburi, who narrated from Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Qalu ya Rasulullah, innaka tuda'ibna, qala inni la aqulu illa haqqa. Okay, Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Qalu, Qalu means the Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'in, that were present in the majlis of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasulullah, you joke with us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Yes, but I only speak the truth. Remember the example that he said, O the Udhunayn, Ya the Udhunayn, that O oh, the one who uh, are of, uh, of two ears, the one who possesses, uh, who has the two, uh, two ears. It is pretty obvious that he had the two ears, just had to call it in a way that would be uh, funny. That is what it is. Okay, but it is truth, nevertheless. This particular hadith is recorded by. Uh, Imam Tirmidhi rahimahullah ta'ala and Imam Ahmad in his Musnad, volume 2, page 360. The next hadith, Qutaybah ibn Sa'id narrated to us, saying that Khalid ibn Abdullah narrated to us from Humayd, who narrated from Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala an, anna rajulan istahmala rasulillahi sallallahu, rasulallahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, faqal, inni hamiluka ala waladi naqah, فقال يا رسول الله ما أصنع بولد الناقة فقال وهل تلد الإبلة إلا النوق قتيبة بن سعيد نرجع إلى أس خالد بن عبد الله نرجع إلى أس من حميد ذات أنس بن مالك رضي الله تعالى عنه said a man asked رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم to give him a mount so he said I will give you an offspring of she camel of a she camel the man said يا رسول الله what am I supposed to do with an offspring of a she camel رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said do other than she camels give birth to camels it is the woman who gives birth to the child uh, uh, the man and woman right similarly it is the she camel who gives birth to the camels and she camels the male camel which is uh, Jamal, it does not give any birth. Rather, the she camel, an uh, is the one that gives the birth. Okay, it's just that, ma asna'u bi walad in naqa, when Rasulullah said, uh, uh, when Rasulullah said, inni hamiluka ala walad in naqa. Okay, that I will give you an offspring of a she camel. Walad in naqa, walad means boy in Arabic language, but here it means the offspring. Okay, offspring of a she camel. But he thought that it is just a boy, okay? Or he thought that it was something else. Hence, Rasulullah said, Do other than she camels give birth to camels? It is the she camels who give birth to other camels. This particular hadith is recorded by Imam Abu Dawud in his Sunan, and Imam Tirmidhi also recorded it in his Sunan. Next hadith. Ishaq ibn Mansur narrated to us saying that Abdul Razak narrated to us. He said, Ma'mar narrated to us from Thabit who narrated from Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu anna rajulam min ahli al-badiyati kaan asmuhu zahira wa kaan yuhdi ila nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallama hadiyyatan min al-badiyya hadiyyatan min al-badiyya fa yujahizuhu nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallama idha arada an yakhruj fa qala nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallama inna zahiran badiyatuna wa nahnu hadiruh 
وكان صلى الله عليه وسلم يحبه وكان رجلا دميما فأتاه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يوما وهو يبيع متاعه فاحتضنه من خلفه وهو لا يبصره فقال من هذا من هذا أرسلني فالتفت فعرف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فجعل ما يأل ما ألصق ظهره بصدر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حين عرفه فجعل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول من يشتري هذا العبد فقال يا رسول الله إذا والله تجدني كاسدا فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لكن عند الله لست عند الله عند الله لست بكاسد أو قال أنت عند الله عند الله غال There was a man from the people of desert His name was Zahir he, and he used to bring Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم a gift from the desert Okay from Sahara Okay from uh, from uh, from, ba, uh, from Wadi uh, من البادية and the Prophet وسلم, would equip him with provisions of the city. Because he used to come from a, a Bedouin area that is like a, 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 a desert area. He would bring gifts and Rasulullah would give him gifts as well from the city. Because Rasulullah was living in a, in a town, uh, in a city where it, it was pretty much, uh, what, what do you call, quite hustle, hustling and bustling. That city, Madinat uh, Rasulullah uh, When he wanted to return to his family. Okay, Rasulullah would equip him with provisions of the city when he wanted to return to his family in the valley, in the, uh, in the desert. Okay, the Prophet Sallallahu said, Zahir is our desert and we are his valleys. Meaning the newcomers and the original ones. Okay, those people who live in the desert, you would see them to be Bedouins. Okay, the, life, uh, 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 the life, uh, lifestyle that they have is like that. Okay, you would not see them to be bustle, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, hustling and bustling with the uh, people in the town or in the cities. Okay. One day, oh, sorry, uh, he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, used to love him dearly. Rasulullah Sallam loved this Sahabi Zahir dearly from uh, from uh, from uh, from uh, from desert. Okay, so. Rasulullah loved him dearly though he was an unattractive man. Someone who was unattractive. Okay, meaning Damim. This is the Arabic word. Damim means someone who is an, uh, un, uh, unattractive. One day, while he was selling his merchandise, the Prophet came up to him and embraced him from behind so that he could not see who it was. Rasulullah uh, uh, Zahir ta'ala anhu, the Bedouin uh, man asked, Who is this? Let go of me. Then when he turned around and recognized it was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he recognized it was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he began to press his back against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's chest. So that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam began to say, Who will purchase this slave? He said, Ya Rasulullah, in that case by Allah you will find me to be unsellable. Because of the love that Rasulullah had for this Bedouin, Zahir radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So he, the love that they had for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he did, uh, when, uh, when uh, Rasulullah said that who would purchase this slave, this abd, referring to Zahir, whereas he was not a, a, a slave. Then Zahir radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Ya Rasulullah, in that case, Wallah, by Allah, you will find me to be unsellable, meaning, uh, uh, kasid. Okay, the Arabic term is kasid. So that is what it means that you will find me unsellable. The Prophet wasallam said, but with Allah you are not unsellable. Or he said, you are valuable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the other meaning. Meaning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a believer is valuable. Okay, his blood is more valuable the, than the, uh, uh, the, than the Kaaba itself. Okay, this particular hadith is recorded by Imam Ahmad rahmatullahi alayhi in his Musnad, hadith number 12669. The next hadith, my brothers and sisters, is that Abd, uh, Abd ibn Humayn narrated to us, he said, Mus'ab ibn al-Miqdam narrated to us, he said, Al-Mubarak ibn Fadalah narrated to us from Al-Hasan who said Atat ajuzun ila nabiy sallallahu alayhi wasallam an old lady came to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam she said faqalat ya rasulullah ud'u allah an yudkhilani al-jannah ya rasulullah make dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that allah grants me an entrance uh, entry in jannah faqal 
and Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ya Umm Fulan, O mother of so and so, in al Jannah la tadkhuluha ajuz. That in Jannah, an old uh, woman does not enter. An old woman, there is no place for her in Jannah. Qal, fawallat tabki. The narrator said that uh, she started crying. Okay, she started crying so uh, so heavily. So he said, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Akhbiruha annaha la tadkhuluha wa hiya ajuz. Tell her, uh, you tell her that Jannah annaha la tadkhuluha wa hiya ajuz. Okay, she will not enter in Jannah as an old woman. That was, that was the meaning. Okay, there is no place for old woman in Jannah and she started crying and Rasulullah said that inform her there is, that she will not enter in Jannah as an old woman. Then Rasulullah uh, uh, Sallam brought, uh, 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 recited these verses where he said, Inna Allah Ta'ala yaqul, indeed Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, Inna ansha'nahunna insha'a, we have created them a new creation. فَجَعَلْنَاهُنَّ أَبْكَارًا And made them virgins, عُرُبًا أَتْرَابًا Loving, equal in age. Okay, this hadith is recorded by, uh, by other, uh, this hadith is da'if but supported by other narration found in Al-Tabarani uh, 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 in Al-Awsat. Okay, in his book called Al-Awsat on the authority of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. So this one here, it is narrated by uh, Al-Hasan. Uh, maybe maybe Al Hassan ibn Ali, uh, or maybe someone else. But this hadith is da'if. However, the benefit that we can take is that in Jannah there will be no one old. Okay, this uh, fixed age that another hadith that is narrated. Maybe Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows best on the authority of Aisha radhiyallahu taala anha that uh, everyone will enter young, like 33 years old, whether man or woman. And the verses that are being read in this uh, hadith is from Surah Al-Waqi'ah, chapter number 56, verses 35, 36, and 37. Three verses over here. Inna ansha'nahunna insha'an faj'alnahunna abkaran uruban atraba. These are the verses. My brothers and sisters, the next chapter is Babu ma ja'a fi sifati kalami Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi shi'r. Okay, what has been narrated concerning the poetry of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the poetry. This is something that actually we disregard. Ali ibn Hujur narrated to us saying that Sharik narrated to us from uh, al miqdam ibn Shurayh, who narrated from his father al Shurayh, who, uh, 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 who narrated from his father Shurayh, who narrated from Ul Mu'minin Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, qalat, she said, qila laha, it was said to her, هَلْ كَانَ نَبِيَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ يَتَمَثَّلُ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الشِّعِرِ Did the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم imitate any form of poetry? قالت, أم المؤمنين عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها said, كَانَ يَتَمَثَّلُ بِشِعْرِ ابْنِ رَوَاحَةً وَيَتَمَثَّلُ بِقَوْلِهِ وَيَأْتِيكَ بِالْأَخْبَارِ مَا وَيَأْتِيكَ بِالْأَخْبَارِ مَنْ لَمْ تُزَوِّد That she said that he used to imitate the poetry of Abdullah ibn Rawaha. And he would cite this co uh, couplets. You will be brought the news by one whom you have not supplied with provisions. Okay. This is what Rasulullah used to say. This hadith is recorded by Imam Tirmidhi in his Sunnah. As for the next hadith, my brothers and sisters, Muhammad ibn Bashar narrated to us, he said that Abdurrahman ibn Mahdi narrated to us, he, is, he said uh, that uh, Sufyan al-Thawri narrated to us from uh, uh, Abdul Malik ibn Umair, he said that Abu Salama narrated to us from Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said that qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, inna asdaqa kalimatin qalaha al-sha'iru kalimatu labid, ala kullu shay'in ma khala allahu batilun, wa kada umayyatu ibn Abi Salt an yuslim. Okay, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the truest words spoken by a poet is the saying of Labid ibn Rabi'ah, Indeed, everything besides Allah is futile. Allah kullu shay'in ma khala Allahu batilun. Anything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rather everything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is futile, totally nothing. 
The poet Umayyah ibn Abi Salt was on the verge of embracing Islam. Okay, so uh, the other poet who he uh, who Labid ibn Rabi'a was uh, reciting the poems was about to accept Islam. This hadith is recorded by Imam Bukhari and his student Imam Muslim and Hajjaj along with Imam, Imam Muhammad ibn Isa at-Tirmidhi rahimahumullahu rahmatun wasi'ah. Next hadith. Muhammad ibn al-Muthanna narrated to us saying that Muhammad ibn Ja'far narrated to us, he said that Shu'bah narrated to us from al-Aswad ibn Qais who narrated from Jundub ibn Sufyan al-Bajali. He said that Asaba Hajarun Usbu'a Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fadamiyat faqal hal anti illa usbu'un damiti wa fi sabilillahi ma laqiti. That a stone is struck the toe of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in battle, causing it to bleed. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, You are nothing except a toe that bled. What you endured was on the path, path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. هَلْ أَنْتِ إِلَّا أُصْبُعٌ دَمِيتِ وَفِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ مَا لَقِيتِ You are nothing except a toe that bled. What you endured was on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari, his student Imam Muslim, and Muhammad ibn Isa al-Tirmidhi rahimahumullah. Similar hadith was narrated from Abdu, uh, uh, Ibn Abi Umar. Who, uh, he said that uh, Sufyan ibn Uyana narrated to us from Al-Aswad ibn Qais, from Jundub ibn Abdullah al-Bajali. Okay, so the, uh, it's different chain. Okay, so the one here is uh, separated from Al-Aswad ibn Qais. From Al-Aswad ibn Qais, you have uh, Sufyan ibn Uyana. Prior to the, uh, the hadith before that, it was from Aswad ibn, uh, Aswad ibn Qais, Shu'bah, rahimahumullah. Next hadith, my brothers and sisters, from Muhammad ibn Bashar, he narrated to us, saying that Yahya ibn Sa'id narrated to us. He said, Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah ta'ala, narrated to us. He said, Anba'ana Abu Ishaq. Abu Ishaq, inform, uh, Abu Ishaq informed us from Al-Bara ibn Azib, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, Qala lahu rajulun. A man said to him, Afarartum ar Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ya, uh, ya Aba Umarah. Did you all flee at the day of Hunayn, leaving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa exposed? O oh, Aba Umara, Aba Umara was the kunya of Al-Bara ibn Azib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He replied, Faqal, la, wallahi ma walla Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No, by Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not retreat. Walakin, walla sara'anu nasi talaqathum hawazinu bin nabl. But some who were hasty retreated and were received by arrows from the Hawazin. Wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala baghlati. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was mounted on a mule with Abu Sufyan ibn al-Harith and, uh, uh, and uh, Abu Sufyan ibn al-Harith ibn Abdul Muttalib. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Wa Abu Sufyan ibn Harith ibn Muttalib akhidun bi lijamiha. Wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Yaqul, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ana nabiyyu la kathib, ana ibn Abdul Muttalib. I am the prophet, no lie, I am the son of Abdul Muttalib. So, here all these poems that are, we, are, we are going through from this chapter, is that the poetry is something that was from the Arab culture. Poetry is something from the Arab culture, they took pride in it. And Alhamdulillah that Islam later on promoted that uh, 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 poetry the, or the spoken words. And many people from the time of Rasulullah defended Allah and Muhammad through the poetry beside the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course. So the hadith that I just read, Ana Nabiyu la Kadib Ana ibn Abdul Muttalib, it is recorded by Imam al Bukhari, Imam Muslim ibn Hajjaj, and Imam Muhammad ibn Isa at Tirmidhi rahimahumullahu rahmatan wasi'ah. Next hadith, my brothers and sisters. Ishaq ibn Mansur narrated to us, saying that Abdul Razak narrated to us, who said 
that Ja'far ibn Sulaiman narrated to us. He said, Thabit narrated to us from Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam adakhala makkata fi umrati al-qada, wa ibn rawahata yamshi bayna yidayhi wa huwa yaqul. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered Makkah during his missed umrah, umrah al-qada. So even for umrah there is qada as well. The umrah that he missed, he made a, a compensation to that, meaning he made another Umrah. And Ibn Rawaha, Abdullah Ibn Rawaha radiallahu ta'ala anhu, walked in front of him, chanting, saying these, uh, these lines, خَلُّوا بَنِ الْكُفَّارِ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ أَلْيَوْمَ نَضْرِبْكُمْ عَلَى تَنْزِيلِهِ ضَرْبًا يُزِيلُ الْهَامَ عَنْ مَقِيلِهِ وَيُذْهِلُ الْخَلِيلَ عَنْ خَلِيلِهِ خلوا بني الكفار عن سبيله اليوم نضرب نضربكم على تنزيله ضربا يزيل الهام عن مقيله ويذهل الخليل عن خليله clear o children of the disbelievers meaning clear the way from from his path for today we shall strike you with such force اليوم نضربكم على تنزيله ضربا يزيل الهام عن مقيله a blow that will severe the head from its neck. وَيُذْهِلُ الْخَلِيلَ عَنْ خَلِيلِهِ And distract a dear friend from his dear friend. And of course, as you know, that Makkah later on became victorious. Umar رضي الله تعالى عنه said to him, فقال له عمر, يا ابن رواحة, O son of رواحة, O ابن رواحة, in the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sanctuary, you chant poetry? بَيْنَ يَدَيْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ وَفِي حَرَمِ اللَّهِ تَقُولُ الشِّعْرِ That was Umar radiallahu anhu's question. فَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu خَلِّ عَنْهُ يَا عُمَرْ فَلَهِيَ أَسْرَعُ فِيهِمْ مِن نَضْحِ Leave him alone because it will strike them down quicker than the firing of arrows. Okay, the tongue is something that is really uh, stronger than the arrows and quite quick, quicker than the arrows. This hadith is recorded by uh, Imam at Tirmidhi rahmatullahi alayhi and others. Next hadith, my brothers and sisters, Ali ibn Hujur narrated to us saying that Sharik narrated to us from Simak ibn Harb who narrated from Jabir ibn Samur radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said Jalastu nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam akthara min mi'ati marra wa kana ashabuhu yatanashaduna shi'ir wa yatadhakaruna ashia min amri al-jahiliya wa huwa sakit wa rubba ma tabassama ma'ahum that I sat with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Jabir ibn Samur radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said that I sat with the Prophet ﷺ more than a hundred times and his Sahaba, his companions used to recite poetry to one another. They would reminisce, uh, uh, reminisce about things from the time of Jahiliyyah. They would remember about the things from the time of Jahiliyyah, uh, time of ignorance, meaning the pagan era. While he would sit silently and sometimes even smile with them. Okay, this is Rasulullah ﷺ. This is recorded by Imam Al-Tirbiti. This is a weak tradition, but it is supported by other narration that is recorded by Imam Al-Nasai, rahimahullah ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, the next hadith is from Ali ibn Hujur. He, he narrated to us saying that uh, Sharik narrated to us from Abdul Malik ibn Umair, who narrated from Abu Salama, who narrated from Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who narrated from an Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, an Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ash'aru kalimatin takallamat biha al-Arabu kalimatu labid, ala kullu shay'in ma khalallahu batilun. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the best of the poetic saying spoken by the Arabs is the saying of Labid ibn Rabi'ah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said that indeed everything besides Allah is futile. Ala kullu shay'in ma khalallahu batilun. Next hadith, my brothers and sisters. The hadith that I read is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim and Imam al-Tirmidhi. The next hadith is from Ahmad ibn Munir. He narrated to us saying that Marwan ibn Muawiyah narrated to us from Abdullah ibn Abdul Rahman al-Ta'ifi who narrated from Amr ibn al-Sharid who narrated from al-Sharid, his father. He said, كنت ردف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فَأَنْشَدْتُهُ مِئَةَ قَافِيَةٍ مِنْ قَوْلِ أُمَيَّةٍ إِبْنْ أَبِ الصَّلْتِ أَثَّقَفِي كُلَّمَا أَنْشَدْتُهُ بَيْتًا قَالَ لِيَ النَّبِيَ صلى الله عليه وسلم هِهْ حَتَّى أَنْشَدْتُهُ مِئَةٍ يَعْنِي بَيْتًا فَقَالَ النَّبِيَ صلى الله عليه وسلم إِنْ كَادَ لَيُسْلِمْ 
I rode behind the Prophet ﷺ and I recited to him a hundred poetic verses of Umayyah ibn Abu Salt al thaqafi Whenever I recited a verse to him, the Prophet ﷺ said to me, recite more to me. He meaning recite more to me. Until I eventually recited a hundred verses to him, the Prophet ﷺ said that he was on the verge of embracing Islam. Who? The, uh, the poet called Umayyah ibn Abi Salt. Al-Thaqafi. This is recorded by Imam Muslim Rahmatullahi Alayhi in his Sahih. The next hadith, my brothers and sisters, is from Ismail ibn Musa al-Fazari. He narrated to us, along with Ali ibn Hujur, wal-ma'na wahid, meaning one and the same. Qala, they both said, Haddathana Abdurrahman ibn Abi Zinad. Abdurrahman ibn Abi Zinad narrated to us from Hisham ibn Urwa, who narrated from his father Urwa, who narrated from Umm al-Uminin Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. She said, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yada'alu Hassan ibn Thabitin minbara fil masjid yaqumu alayhi qa'iman yufakhiru ar Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aw qala yunafihu ar Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa yaqul, inna allaha yu'ayyidu Hassan biruhi al قدس ما ينافح أو يفاخر عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to set up a pulpit, a member, in the masjid for Hassan ibn Thabit رضي الله تعالى عنه. He would stand upon it, praising رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم, or he said defending رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. So one is, uh, uh, one is that. يُفَاخِرُ رَسُولُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ The other one is يُنَافِحُ which means defending Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. He صلى الله عليه وسلم would say Allah سبحانه وتعالى supports Hassan with the spirit. The spirit means روح القدس. روح القدس the archangel. جبريل عليه الصلاة والسلام. جبرائيل. Okay, روح القدس refers to the archangel جبرائيل عليه السلام. The one who carried the revelation to all the prophets and messengers with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supports Hassan with the spirit, meaning Ruh al-Quds, as long as he praises or defends Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa As long as Hassan bin Thabit radiallahu ta'ala defends Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah supports Hassan with the spirit, meaning, uh, with the spirit, uh, meaning uh, Jibreel alayhi salam. So this hadith is recorded by Imam Abu Dawud rahmatullahi alayhi. Now, similar hadith actually was narrated by Ismail ibn Musa and Ali ibn Hujur. So the earlier one is Ismail ibn Musa al-Fazari, the same person. Qala haddathana ibn zanat an abiha an urwata an aisha ta mithla. So uh, another hadith, by, by same, same actually, but uh, through different chain and different recorder, it was narrated that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supports Hassan ibn Thabit radiallahu ta'ala anhu with the spirit, uh, which is Ruh al-Qudus, Jibra'il alayhi salam. As for the next chapter, my brothers and sisters, it is about Babu ma jaa fi kalami Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi samar. Okay, what has been narrated concerning the conversations at night? Fi kalami Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi samar means conversations at night of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Hasan ibn Sabbah al-Bazzar narrated to us saying that Abu Nadr narrated to us. He said that Abu Aqil al-Thaqafi narrated uh, 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 to us. Abu Aqil al-Thaqafi meaning Abdullah ibn Aqil. Who, he narrated from Mujalid, who narrated from Ash-Sha'bi, who narrated from Masruq, who narrated from Umm al-Mu'minin Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. She said, Haddatha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallama dhata laylatin nisa'ahu hadithan. Faqalat imra'atum minhunna ka'anna al-haditha haditha khurafa. Faqal, atadruna ma khurafa? Inna khurafa takana rajulam min udra. Asaratu al-jinn. في الجاهلية فمكث فيهم دهرة ثم ردوه إلى الإنس فكان يحدث الناس بما رأى فيهم من الأعاجب فقال الناس حديث خرافة Even though the hadith is weak, it is recorded by Imam Ahmad uh, رحمه الله تعالى in his musnad that Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم narrated to his wives a story one night and one of them said it is as if you are relating a story of خرافة Rasulullah said, do you know Khurafa? 
Khurafa was a man from the tribe of Udra. The jinn kidnapped him in the time of Jahiliyyah, in the time of ignorance. So he stayed with them for a while. When they eventually returned him with the people, he began to narrate the people about the extraordinary things that he saw among the, uh, among the jinns. So the people said the story of Khurafa. Okay. The people said the story of Khurafa. Next hadith is rather long, but I will inshallah read it to you guys because uh, it is something that uh, when it comes to uh, authentic hadith and when it comes to the night talk, we need to be mindful of it. That's why we will go through uh, uh, this hadith inshallah. Ali ibn Hujur narrated to us saying that Isa ibn Yunus narrated to us from Hisham ibn Urwa who narrated from his brother Abdullah ibn Urwa who narrated from their father Urwa who narrated from Al Mumin Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha she said Jalasat ihda ashrata mra'atan fata'ahadahunna wa ta'aqadna alla yaktumna min akhbari azwajihinna shay'a faqalat al ula zawji lahm jamalin ghathin ala ra'si jabalin wa'ir لا سهل لا سهل فيرتقى ولا سمين فينتقل قالت الثانية زوجي لا أبث خبره إني أخاف أن لا أذره إن أذكره أذكر أذكر عجرته عجره وبجره لا أبث خبره إني لا أخاف أن لا أذره إن أذكره أذكر عجره وبجره قالت الثالثة the third one said زوجي العشن نق إن إن أنطق أطلق وإن أسكت أعلق قالت الرابعة زوجي كليل تهامة لا حر ولا قر ولا مخافة ولا سآمة قالت الخامسة زوجي إن دخل فهدى وإذا وإن خرج أسدا ولا يسأل عما عهدا قالت السادسة زوجي إن أكل لف وإن شرب اشتف وإن اضطجع التف ولا يولج الكف ليعلم البث قالت السابعة زوجي عياياء أو غياياء طبق طباقاء كل داء له داء شجك أو فلك أو جمع كل لك كل لك أو جمع كل لك قالت الثامنة زوج المس مس أرنب والريح ريح زرنب قالت التاسعة زوجي رفيع العماد طويل النجاد عظيم الرماد قريب البيت من الناد قالت العاشرة زوجي مالك وما مالك مالك خير من ذلك له إبل كثيرات المبارك قليلات المسارح إذا سمعنا صوت المزهر أيقن أنهن هوالك قالت الحادية عشرة زوجي أبو زرع وما أبو زرع أناس من حلي من حلي أذني وملأ من شحم عضدي وبجحني فبجحت إلي نفسي وجدني في أهل غنيمة بشق فجعلني في أهل صهيل وأطيت ودائس ومنق فعنده أقول فلا أقبح وأرقد فأتصبح وأشرب فأتقمح أم أبي زرع فما أم أبي زرع عكومها رضاح وبيتها فساح ابن أبي زرع فما ابن أبي زرع مضجعه كمسل شطبة وتشبعه ذراع الجفرة بنت أبي زرع فما بنت أبي زرع طوع أبيها وطوع أمها ملء كسائها وغيظ جارتها جارية أبي زرع فما جارية أبي زرع لا تبث حديثنا تبثيثا ولا تنقث ميرتنا تنقيثا ولا تملأ بيتنا تعشيشا قالت خرج أبو زرع والأوطاب تمخض فلقي امرأة معها ولدان لها كالفهدين يلعبان من تحت خصرها برمانتين فطلقني ونكحها فنكحت بعده رجلا سريا ركب شريا وأخذ خطيا وأراح علي نعما نعما ثريا وأعطاني من كل رائحة زوجة وقال كلي أم زرع وميري أهلك فلو جمعت كل شيء أعطانيه ما بلغ أصغر آنية آنية أبي زرع قالت عائشة فقال لي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كنت لك كأبي زرع لأم زرع All these 11 women they were talking about their husbands they said it in a poetic way and that is something quite often we do not see uh, in our culture 
Okay, whenever we talk, actually, we talk in a way that even when we are talking, may Allah forbid, even when the women mention their, uh, about their husband to other women, they mention it in a way that actually uh, destroys the mood of the majlis. So Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said that 11 women sat together, pledged and committed themselves that they would not conceal anything about their husbands. Okay, the first one said, my husband is like the meat of his crony camel, which is kept on the top of a mountain, which is neither easy to climb, nor is the meat fleshy enough for it to be carried away by people to eat. The second woman said, my husband, I do not reveal information about him because uh, for fear that I may not be able to finish with him. Because if I mention him, I shall mention his apparent and hidden defects. The third woman said, my husband is extremely tall and bad mannered. Ashannaq. If I speak about his faults, I will be divorced. And if I remain silent, I am left hanging. Okay, that is, a, uh, uh, that is what the third one said. The fourth one said, My husband is moderate like the night of Tihama, which is neither extremely hot or cold, neither fearful nor boring. The fifth one said, My husband, if he enters the house, he pounces like a leopard, and if he leaves, he is bored like a lion, and does not ask about whatever happened to his wealth. The sixth woman said, My husband, if he eats, he eats excessively due to his gluttonousness. And if he drinks, he gulps all of it. And if he lies down to sleep, uh, to sleep, he wraps himself up. And he does not feel his palm inside my clothes to know my sadness, my sorrow. That was the sixth woman. As for the seventh woman, she said, My husband is incompetent. Okay, ayaya. That's what the seventh one said. That Zawji Ayaya, my husband is incompetent, misguided, Ghayaya, and impo uh, impotent, meaning Tabaqa. He is sick with every sickness. If he beats, he will cause injury to your skull or break your bones or do both to you. The eighth one. No, uh, woman number eight she said my husband's touch is like the soft touch of a rabbit and his scent is like the scent of a sweet smelling perfume Zarunab. so she said in a poetic way arnab means rabbit later on she in order for her to finish the sentence she said he smells like zarnab arnab zarnab two lines the ninth woman she said my husband has the loftiest of the houses is tall of stature, Tawil al-Najad, is abundantly hospitable, Azim al-Ramad, and has a house close to the people's assembly, Bayt al-Nad. Woman number 10, she said, my husband is Malik. And what is that I can say about Malik? What is Malik? Malik is better than that. He has many camels that are kept ready to be slaughtered for guests. And, few, and a few roam the pastures. If they hear the sound of the lute, they know for certain that they are about to be slaughtered. The 11th woman, she said, my husband is Abu, uh, Abu Zara. And what is that I can say about Abu Zara? He has made my ears dangle with jewelry, filled, up, uh, filled my upper arms with fat, and honored me until I felt proud of myself. He found me among the poor sh uh, shepherds in dire strains, and then placed me among the owners of horses, camels, and cows that trample corpse and workers who thresh seeds. In his presence I can speak, because I shall not be scolded or rebuked. And when I sleep, I sleep till late in the morning. And when I drink, I drink until I satisfy my thirst. The mother of Abu Zura, uh, Abu Zura, uh, Abu Zara. And what is it? What is that I can say about the mother of Abu Zara? Her sacks are heavy with provision, and her house is spacious, meaning house is quite big. And the son of Abu Zara, what, what is that I can say about the son of Abu Zara? His bed is like a palm stick stripped of, his, uh, of its leaves because he is very slender and he is satiated by the foreleg of a lamb. Uh, of a lamb Jafra. As for the 
daughter of Abu Zara. And what is that I can say about the daughter of Abu Zara? She is obedient to her father and to her mother. She fills her clothes and is corpulent and enrages her female neighbors because of her beauty. The maidservant of Abu Zara. And what is that I can say about the maidservant of Abu Zara? She does not broadcast what we say in our conversation, nor does she waste our provision, nor and nor does she leave the litter scattered in the house. She then added, One day it so happened that Abu Zara went out at the time when the milk skins were being charred uh, to extract butter. And he encountered a woman who had with her two children. Like two leopards playing under, the, under her waist with two pomegranates. On seeing her, he divorced me and married her. Thereafter, I married a nobleman who rode a sturdy horse and held a spear in his hand and brought home to me ample livestock. Many, many animals. Okay, camel, horse, sheep. And used to say to me, eat Umm Zara, Zara and feed your family and relatives. Yet were I to gather everything that he gave me, it would not amount to the smallest of the vessels. Okay, he was extremely rich. The second one that she got married to. As for Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, the narrator of this hadith, she said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to me, I have been to you as Abu Zara was to Umm Zara. Rasulullah so said to Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha that I have been to you as Abu Zara was to Umm Zara. Okay. This hadith is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari, Imam Muslim. The point that we can take actually from this hadith is that we see quite often how people can be ungrateful. This ungratefulness, not to be prejudiced or being uh, sexist, we see it from the women folk, especially that are married. To a degree they say, uh, things about their husbands, they say things about their husband to the others and they should not do so, okay? And they should, they need to be patient. Similarly, uh, we also need to remind them, okay? We also need to remind them because sometimes when our mothers, our daughters, our sisters and our wives end up saying things, they sometimes uh, end up paying the consequences more. Why? Because it is quite heavy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, will punish them for that and we will be punished even more because the, we are responsible for our women and when the responsibility is not fulfilled then of course we need to pay the price uh, by being punished next hadith my brothers and sisters is in the chapter which is babu maja'a fi naumi rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa chapter of uh, Rasulullah uh, concerning the sleep or the description of the Rasulullah sleeping Muhammad ibn al-Muthanna narrated to us saying that Abdurrahman ibn Mahdi narrated to us saying that Israel narrated to us from, ibn Isha, uh, from Abu Ishaq who narrated from Abdullah ibn Yazid who narrated from Al-Bara ibn Azib radiallahu ta'ala anhu and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana idha akhadha madja'ahu wada'a kaffahu al-yumna tahta khaddihi al-ayman wa qal rabbi qini a'adabaka yawma tab'athu ibadak when the Prophet ﷺ lay down to sleep, he placed his right palm under his right cheek. He placed his right palm under his right cheek and said, Rabbi Qini, Rabbi Qini, O oh my Lord, protect me from your torment, from your punishment on the day when you resurrect your servants. This hadith is recorded by Imam Ahmad rahmatullahi in his musnad. Look, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa previous sins and the latter sins are forgiven. Yet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa always used to seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the punishment. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment. Muhammad ibn al-Muthanna, next hadith. He narrated to us saying that Abdurrahman narrated to us saying that Israel narrated to us from Abu Ishaq, who narrated from Abu Ubaidah, who narrated from Abdullah Mithla, the same hadith. Waqal yawma tajma'u ibadak. This particular statement is there, that is, that yawma tajma'u ibadak, on the day you will gather your servants. 
As for the next hadith, my brothers, brothers and sisters, Mahmud ibn Ghailan narrated to us saying that Abdul Razak narrated to us saying that Sufyan narrated to us from Abdul Malik ibn Umair, who narrated from Rib'i ibn Hirash, who narrated from Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, كَانَ نَبِيَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ إِذَا أَوَى إِلَى فِرَاشِهِ قَالْ أَلَّهُمَّ بِسْمِكَ أَمُوتُ وَأَحْيَا وَإِذَا اسْتَيْقَضَ قَالْ أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي أَحْيَانَا بَعْدَ مَا أَمَاتَنَا وَإِلَيْهِ النُّشُورِ that when the Prophet ﷺ would retire to his bedding, meaning Firash, he would say, Allahumma bismika amutu ahiya, O Allah, by your name, by your name, I shall, uh, I shall die and live. When he woke up, he would say, Alhamdulillah, ladhi ahiyana ba'da ma amatana, wilayhu nushur. That praise be to Allah who revived us after he caused us to die, and to him is our final return. This is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari, Imam Muslim, rahimahumullah. Along with, uh, uh, sorry, Imam al-Bukhari, Imam Abu Dawood, and Imam al-Tirmidhi, rahimahumullah. Next hadith, my brothers and sisters, is from Qutaybah bin Sa'id. He narrated to us saying that Al-Mufaddal ibn Fadala narrated to us saying, uh, and narrated to us from Uqail, Urahu an zuhri Okay, Urahu an zuhri from al zuhri who narrated from uh, Urwa. Who narrated from Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. She said, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ida awa ila firashihi kulla laylatin Jama'a kafayhi fa nafatha fihima Wa qara'a fihima Qul huallahu ahad Wa qul a'udhu rabbil falak Wa qul a'udhu rabbil nas Thumma masaha bihima Masata'a min jasadih Yabda'u bihima ra'sahu wa wajha Wa ma aqbala min jasadih Yasna'u thalika thalatha marat Whenever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa would retire to his bedding each night, he would join his palms of his hands, then blow into them, dry blow, and would recite, Qul Allahu Ahad, which is Surah Al-Ikhlas, chapter number 112, Qul Bil Falak, chapter number 113, 113 and and chapter number 114-114. He would then wipe with them after reading, wipe with them whatever he could of his body, wherever his hands reached, beginning by wiping his head and his face and the front part of his body, doing that three times. This is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari rahmatullahi alayh along with Imam Abu Dawood and Imam al-Tirmidhi rahimahumullahu rahmatan wasi'ah. Next hadith, my brothers and sisters. Muhammad ibn Bashar narrated to us saying that Abdurrahman ibn Mahdi narrated to us. He said, Sufyan narrated to us from Salamah ibn Kuhail who narrated from Quraib who narrated from Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. He said that uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nama hatta nafakh. وكان إذا نام نفخ فأتاه بلال فآذنه بصلاة فقام وصلى ولم يتوضأ وفي الحديث قصة. It is recorded by Imam Bukhari and Imam Tirmidhi. It is recorded by Imam Bukhari and Imam Tirmidhi. The hadith is that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam slept until he was breathing heavily. And when he would sleep, he breathed heavily. So Bilal radiallahu ta'ala came to him and notified him for ritual prayer. Whereupon he got up and performed the ritual prayer without performing ritual ablution. The tradition is det has a detailed incident. Okay, the story is long. It is recorded by Imam Bukhari, Imam, uh, Imam Tirmidhi as I mentioned earlier. As for the next hadith, my brothers and sisters, it is from Ishaq ibn Masur. He narrated to us saying that Affan narrated to us, he said that uh, he said that Hamad ibn Salamah narrated, uh, narrated to us from Thabit, who narrated from Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana idha awa ila firashi qal alhamdulillah ladhi at'amana wa saqana wa kafana wa awana fakam mimman la kafiya la wa la mu'wiya. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would retire to his bedding, he would say, Praise be to Allah who fed us and gave us drink and sufficed us and sheltered us for how many there are who have neither anyone to take care of them 
or uh, nor anyone to provide shelter. Subhanallah. This is recorded by Imam Muslim and Imam Tirmidhi. As for the last hadith in, the, in this chapter, my brothers and sisters, is Al Hussein ibn Muhammad al Jariri narrated to us saying that Suleiman ibn Harb narrated to us saying that Hamad ibn Salamah narrated to us from Humayd who narrated from Bakr ibn Abdullah ibn Abdullah al Muzani who narrated from Abdullah ibn Rabah who narrated from Abu Qatadah radiallahu ta'ala anhu and the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana idha arrasa bilayl id taja'a ala shiqqihi al ayman wa idha arrasa qubayla subhi nasaba dira'a wa wada'a rasahu ala kaffih when the Prophet ﷺ would stop over for rest on a journey at night, he would recline on his right side. And when he would stop over to rest on a journey just before the morning, he would position his forearm upright and place his head on the palm of his hand. This is recorded by Imam Muslim rahimahullah ta'ala in his Sahih. Next chapter, my brothers and sisters, is about the ibadah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, about the worship of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The hadith, the first hadith in this chapter in Shamail al Muhammadiyya, Qutibah ibn Sa'id narrated to us along with Bishr ibn Mu'adh. They said, Abu Awana narrated to us from Ziyad ibn Ilaqa, who narrated from Al Mughira ibn Shu'ba radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, Salla Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam hattan fakhat qadamah faqil lah. أَتَتَكَلَّفُ هَذَا وَقَدْ غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَكَ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأَخَّرْ قَالْ أَفَلَا أَكُونُ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا Rasulullah sallam prayed until his feet became swollen when he was asked why do you endure this when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven you your former and your latter sins Rasulullah sallam replied should I not be thankful servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala afala akuna abdan shakura this is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari he is a student of Muslim and Imam Muslim ibn, uh, Imam Muhammad ibn Isa al-Tirmidhi rahimahumullahu rahmatan wasi'ah as for the next hadith my brothers and sisters Abu Ammar al Hussein ibn Hurayth narrated to us saying that al Fadl ibn Musa narrated to us from Muhammad ibn Amr who narrated from Abu Salama who narrated from Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam yusalli hatta tarima qadama qala faqila la ataf'alu hadha wa qad ja'aka anna Allah qad ghafara laka ma taqaddama min dhanbika wa ma ta'akhkhar qala afala akunu 'abdan shukura same meaning, uh, pretty much same meaning of the hadith before, hadith that was read before, that Rasulullah used to perform the salah until his feet had swollen. When he was asked, must you do this? When it was come to you, it has come to you that Allah has already forgiven you, your former and your latter sins. Rasulullah said, should I not be a thankful servant? Abd, uh, Abd Shakur. Next hadith, my brothers and sisters, O servants of Allah. Isa ibn Uthman ibn Isa ibn Abdurrahman al-Ramli narrated to us saying that Ammi, meaning his uncle, my uncle narrated to, my uncle Yahya ibn Isa al-Ramli narrated to us from Al-A'mash, who narrated from Abu Salih, who narrated from Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقوم يصلي حتى تنتخف تنتفق قدما فيقال له يا رسول الله تفعل هذا وقد غفر الله لك ما تقدم من ذنبك وما تأخر قال أفلا أكون عبدا شكورا Pretty much same meaning but different uh, uh, rawi. Rasulullah used to perform until he uh, performed the prayer until his feet had become swollen. When he was asked, must you do this when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already forgiven you your former and your latter sins? He sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, should I not be thankful servant? This is recorded. Uh, this actually, this hadith and the one previous together strengthen each other as well as the hadith of al mughira which has preceded. See number, uh, uh, the hadith uh, preceded that you would see in the previous chapter uh, along with uh, uh, the hadith that was mentioned that uh, Alhamdulillah alladhi at'amana wa saqana wa kafana wa awana fa kam min malakin la kafiya lahu wa la mu'wiya. After this, these hadith come actually. As for the next hadith, my brothers and sisters, Muhammad ibn Bashar narrated to us saying, 
let us uh, as a matter of fact uh, let us stop here inshallah we'll rather continue uh, uh, in, in the next halaqa uh, 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 from the hadith uh, from the chapter of uh, ibadat rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the ibadah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all our efforts sincerely done for him to follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our sincerity. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq to act upon the Quran and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Allahumma ameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam mubarak ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Wassalamu alaykum.